Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Eastside Vision Central for Close-Up Tasks with Eastside. Today is March 31st, 2023, and we are going to be looking at doing various close-up tasks with Eastside. We've got a number of video examples of things that we can look at. I hope everyone is doing well today, just uh, having people join in here. Uh, for participants. So I see we have people joining the room. Thank you for joining. This is great. Um, have a number of attendees coming in. Excellent. All right, people, people are coming through. Nice. Okay. So we are going to get uh, we're going to get started here. So uh, we'll get started with the usual with the agenda. So first we're going to do some introduction and housekeeping, and then we're going to use, learn about using eSight with the close-up task, and then do some questions at the end. Uh, this is live, so things might happen. Um, one of the things we are going to be using is eShare today for a Cosmos portion of it. So if eShare does uh, does not function the way we want it to, um, that might happen live. So just want to share that with the group. Uh, this is for users only. Then so you can raise your hand to ask questions throughout the program. Um, and you can also have questions at the end. To raise your hand on a Mac um, computer, it's the Option key plus Y. And on the PC, it's the Alt key plus Y, and that will raise the lower your hand. Um, this session should only take about 30 to 45 minutes, uh, probably normally a little closer to 45 this time, is what I'm thinking. So for the basic foundation, we're going to make sure that the eSight device fits right, which is important, especially if you're you know, doing some close-up tasks and so forth. You want to make sure things are comfortable. The halo is tight enough or on your eSight 3, the back strap are, uh, are nice and snug and everything is comfortable. And uh, eSight is designed to keep you mobile with the bioptic tilt. And the bioptic tilt is also used for the close-up task. So as you'll see during some of the videos, the bioptic tilt is utilized for you know orientating yourself, reaching for objects, and adjusting the uh, eSight as it's needed. Um, also good to have a good cable management uh, system uh, that has, and that helps with long, longevity of using the eSight. So just making sure if you're using an eSight three, that maybe the cord is tucked behind your shoulder. Um, also, you have uh, the uh, good you know, chance that it's not getting snagged depending on what you're trying to do. And also, you know, have additional batteries on hand or have a good battery management system. So if you're doing something close up, like some artwork, we're looking at things, you know, you may want to just make sure that you have a little battery on hand to switch out. You don't have to go looking for something because you're not going to be reading for a while or doing something else that you enjoy doing close up. You're not scrambling and having to stop the, uh, the, uh, the task what you're working on. So first of all, for today, we're going to do some close-up tasks with eSight. So the stuff we're going to be covering today is uh, knitting and cross-stitching with Leah. And then we're going to use our playing cards, coins, and small objects with Richard. We're going to do some reading some text with Jeanette, looking at a cell phone and an iPad with Cosmo. And I'm going to be showing some artwork and small objects um, for myself. And then we'll do a Q&A at the end. So why don't we start now uh, with some knitting and cross-stitching videos with Leah. So I'll pull up the video here, Leah. Okay. And uh, we'll start off with your uh, with your knitting one. Everyone should be able to see this. There we go. All right, thank you. So yeah, here I'm knitting and I am using just the Zoom. I'm in indoor mode and I am um, have it on autofocus. So you can see here when I adjust something, um, my yard was tight. So I was loosening that up with my tension and everything that it focuses on the stuff behind me or behind the project. And with, with our vision, you can't always tell, you know, you can tell something's wrong, but not, not as easy. So, so it has a tendency when you're doing close up stuff, especially with your, when your hands get in the way of dealing with that. Um, so when I use anything for knitting or cross stitching or anything to that effect. I actually have a custom two just because it's the closest thing to indoor. And I have that on um, normal filter, which is what this is. And then um, manual focus, which I will show in a cross stitching video once this one is done. Good timing. <laughs> So here with the cross stitching, um, I have to get a little bit closer to what I am doing just so that way I can see the holes that are in the fabric. I do use 
it's not the smallest fabric that I can use, but it's it's pretty much what I am most comfortable with in everything. So my first thing, I'm using my finger here to find the needle because once I start zooming in, especially in manual focus, everything's gonna be blurry as it is here. So I sort of lose where my needle is at and where I need to focus the most on. So right there, once it started getting close to focusing, I removed my hand and I can see the needle that I need in everything. So again, I am in a custom two, which is a normal filter and manual focus. And I get it to where I can, I zoom in first to where I think it's comfortable at that time. Sometimes I have to adjust that after I get started. Usually I have to go in a little bit more, a step or two more closer, but um, it's, as, it's what's comfortable to whatever I like it at and everything and then I adjust the focus. Sometimes I have to readjust the focus because as I'm working, my project moves closer to me. And with manual focus, it'll start getting blurry if that happens. So if I find it's doing that a lot, I will change the focus or I will just move my head back and put it back into focus and everything. So that's what that is. And it's just, you know, <laughs> it's 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 personal preference. Um, I I'm not sure how many other people like the manual focus. There's some people that I believe Richard can't doesn't have the acuity or whatnot to realize the manual focus to get that into focus. And sometimes with this, I have a tricky time with it, but it does help immensely. And without the eSight, without the manual focus, I would not be able to do cross stitching at all. So. I really did not start cross stitching until I got the eSight. And it's so hard with this because I am using the left hand on the front of the fabric and I am right handed by nature. So that's why I can see the hole and I can see the needle, but it's just lining it all up is the issue. <laughs> all right, excellent. Thank you, Leah, for showing that You're information. Welcome. All right, so next we're going to get playing cards, coins, and small objects with Richard. All right, can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. so. We can all hear you. All right, so we're starting here um, with just a couple of brand new packs of cards that I had never actually seen or used before. Um, so I, like Leah, I'm in indoor mode, um, and I'm just going to be using the basics of the eSight, using zoom and contrast. Um, the, these boxes are kind of embossed and they're, they have the, you know, the, it, it comes out instead of going in. So um, it's, it's kind of hard to see. So what you will see me do is add my, um, add my zoom and then add my contrast to make these stand out, um, to make those lines, those etchings really stand out and come alive. Um, and as you can see, this one is, is a very light color. So um, it's the contrast that I'm adding that is actually making it um, visible. Same thing over here. Now this is a darker, um, this is a, a, a darker deck in general because these are Star Wars cards and this is the dark side um, version, but um, I'm all, I am adding contrast, which is making those etch lines um, also stand out um, a lot more than they naturally would. Because um, you, as you could see in the beginning, it all did blend together. So, so that's just a little a little way to kind of um, you know, and I and of course you can see the uh, the words on the on the box of Star Wars playing cards and um, yeah. So that was um, basically how to use zoom and contrast to make things with etchings kind of stand out and be more visible for you. Excellent. Okay. And I will start the next video here. The coins and the playing cards. So this is a video on, where I'm showing a, uh, like I said, that's a brand new deck of cards. I don't know where the numbers are. I don't know what the layout of the card is or anything. Um, but right now what I'm doing is looking for change because, um, you know, a lot of a lot of your card games might have have some change involved or some chips or, you know, what have you. Um, and it's all going to be the same kind of principles. Once again, I'm using contrast um, 
to be able to identify the different coins there. Um, you know, we used to, as a family, we'd always play penny any and stuff like that, you know, at holidays. So um, I thought it would be nice to kind of show how you can see what, um, you know, what the different change is. So you can see I, I found my quarter. Now that there I was using the Boptic tilt to use my hand to place the bet. Um, now I'm looking at the cards. I have this set up as a game of 21 and I am looking at what the dealer is showing. So he's got a six, it looks like. And then I think he, yep, he also has a four. Um, and once again, I'm basically using Zoom. Now this one, I don't have to use much contrast when it comes to the cards, but I did use a considerable amount when it comes to the coins. Um, once again, with that, you can I can see that I had half of a half of a diamond. So I know that I'm dealing with an overlap. Um, but like I said, I'm not 100% familiar with the layout of these cards yet. So I'm literally going into this quite literally blind. Um, so it takes me a minute to kind of figure out, oh, the number is in the top left-hand corner. And unlike some other cards, it's not going to be in, you know, on, on both sides or this or that. So I find the two. So it looks like the dealer has 12 altogether. Um, and then whatever is their, whatever their whole card is. Um, and I think I probably hit or stood. I don't know. I did the wrong thing, whatever it was, because I lost. Um, don't take me to a casino. It it wouldn't work out well, probably. But um, yeah, basic basic zoom. Um, I'm probably oh, I would say five six feet away. Um, so also do take into account. Um, I have these cards on on a cloth that does provide you know some contrast there. Um, but yeah, that's uh, you know th that technique will work with whatever kind of game you're playing, whether it's poker, solitaire, bridge, whatever. Now we come to um, some collectibles. So I'm a big history buff. Um, I like to collect things as well. So I have a small little collection here of some um, of some musket balls and some mini balls from the Civil War. Um, and these were all uncovered um, and at different uh, different battlefields um, throughout. So um you'll see here in a minute i'm able to kind of zoom in and see the actual patina of this mini ball and the grooves and what made it so deadly back in that day i can see the shape and how that is much much different from what you will see here in a second of having a round you can even see the you can even see the writing you know the the um caliber um mini ball and there you go now you can see that that was a round musket ball um so those had much shorter range um less accurate but every bit is deadly so um and then up here at the top those are caps those those are percussion caps so just a little thing for the collectors out there once again i'm using zoom and i'm using contrast um, the contrast is what allowed you to see those grooves in the mini ball earlier All right, I'm at the final video here. Yep. And the final video, once again, for the collectors out there, um, I have some original 1983 Return of the Jedi action figures. So I actually played with these when I was a kid. Um, so I every once in a while, you know, I kind of like to, to zoom in and check them out and stuff and, you know, re reminds me of, of back in the day. Um, but the, the one thing I want to um, point out is I'm in indoor mode. I'm just using zoom and I'm just using contrast. Um, I'm using my reset button when I need to when I need to reset. Um, and this is basically allowing me say if you were, you know, a, a real serious collector and you wanted to see if there were any nicks or um, marks on the figure or whatever, you could do that. Um, you could, you know, zoom in like what I'm zooming in. And yeah, this is for fun for me right now, but it could have very, um, real applications if you were a serious collector and you wanted to ensure the quality of the figure you were purchasing. So yeah, those are those are figures from Jabba's Palace. Um, if anyone is re familiar with Return of the Jedi. 
Um, and then there is a Star Destroyer, um, and of course the Darth Vader carrying case, because you had to have you had to have your carrying case for your action figures, right? Like you couldn't you couldn't just carry them around in a bag. You had to have you had to have a case for them. So that is uh, that is it. So we'll turn it over to um, to back to Tyler. Yep. Thank you, Richard. All right. Thank you for those. Those are great. And I uh, like showing different things and uh, how the contracts really helped out seeing all that. All right. Next, we're going to look at reading with Jeanette. So, Jeanette, I'm going to pull up your video here. Lovely. So, can everybody hear me? Everything mm -hmm. good? Lovely. So, I'm starting with a reading stand, everybody. Now, I know I've shown some of you have coached this reading stand, but I love it. It has slats on the front and it has a flat back, which becomes the bottom, which becomes the base. And can you see that metal uh, little uh, uh, frame there? It ticks, tap, taps into one of those. It taps into one of those little slats at the bottom so that you can adjust your height. And then there's a tray in the front, a little tray that you can pull down, a little bit like a music stand, actually, just a little bit. But you can rest this on desk, rest it on your lap. And can you see there's two little slats there that come up that's going to hold the pages in place so they don't flip over when you're trying to read them. And uh, I've got a magazine here. <laughs> it's uh, in Boca Raton, Florida, which is where I am. Surprise for some of you. Um, it is basically we get this magazine every month in the house and it's a uh, it's just a magazine full of commercials and things. And so I, I would never be able to read that print without eSight. As you can see, it's very small. You can see the pictures. You can see everything's pretty small. So I'm going to show you, if you get a magazine like this at home, this is what you can do. So you can see I'm zooming up. The most important thing that I did there while I was speaking to you is I was positioning myself. So I was getting myself about eight to 10 inches away from what I'm reading. And once I was positioned, and once I could hold myself relatively still to en enable the focus to, to adjust, I've got the zoom up and I'm still using automatic focus, all right? So I just wanted to show you, you see, luxury. Yeah, you see luxury senior living. <laughs> and you can see that this luxury senior living, what it's going to look like in Delray Beach, which is about 10 minutes from where I live. Okay, I live in Boca Raton. This is Delray Beach. And uh, they're talking about a luxury senior living facility. All right. And then there's, they're telling you that it's, it's going to be the thing that you've always dreamed of, everybody, because they know what everybody's dreamed of. So, hey, there's your phone number. <laughs> uh, you can see that sometimes it gets a little blurry, but it's on table. up. And you can see how I'm taking my time going back to the beginning of the line, um, scanning across there. Slowly, some people have said to me, you know, Jeanette, I lose my place when I'm reading. I say, take your time. Sometimes slower is faster. Okay, because you don't have to go back and read it all again. So take your time, scan, you get to the end of the line. And sometimes we just move down ever so slightly and go back to the beginning of the next line. And that's the best way. And then as you use your eSight more and more with reading, you're going to find it becomes a second nature to you. All right. So I'm just letting you see large zoom, the pictures of the senior luxury living. <laughs> and, uh, and then at the end, I'm going to show you a little... And again, I've been using the reading stand, so I'm not having to hold this with my hands. I can concentrate on maybe zooming or doing what I need to do. And you can see it there sitting in the stand, very nice and steady. And um, I'm gonna close it and you can see the front cover, Boca Raton Observer. And you can see 
this person on the front is, is looking most content, probably going to play golf. There we go. So that's that one. The second Excellent. video, yes. That's a good point for second right now. The Thank second you. video I'm going to show you, ladies and gentlemen, is interesting because as you can see or may not be able to see if you if you have color uh, visual impairment it's a bright red background with white writing so it's not the most standout contrast i've ever seen in my life because normally you know when you've got white on red it can be difficult to distinguish and you can see how blurry it got just there don't panic if that happens to you you can use the finder, okay, um, which is the middle of the three buttons just above the volume on your remote control on the eSight 4. You can just press that finder just for a couple of seconds and release it, and you can see how this image is getting clearer and clearer now. And once it's clear, it pretty much stays like that. Can you, can you see this is about rooibos tea and organic an organic tea and it's talking about where it's from i'm going to give you just a, a minute of silence you can read it for yourselves through the eSight lens and you can see what the experience is like for yourselves so along with the zoom Jeanette, are you using contrast as well I'm actually not using the contrast in this. Okay. And I'm holding this box in my hands. I'm not resting it on a surface. I'm holding it about eight to 10 inches away from me, semi-vertically. Can you see how clear that is? It's a healthful brew. They're claiming it's a very healthful brew from a region in, in South Africa. They were saying that rooibos in Afrikaans means red bush, it's organic. It's, uh, it's packed in small batches so that you, at the, at the source, you can see that at source, for maximum freshness. And you see with small batches. Now, the thing about this, again, is just take your time Go to the end of the line, scan nice and slowly, but steadily so you don't have to go back over it too much. And you can see now these are much bigger, deeper, bolder uh, fonts that they're using here for steeping instructions. But I think this print below is actually smaller than the print above, but I didn't actually adjust the zoom because I found it was okay. And you can see, you know, it's, it's giving you those instructions. Can you see, I'm going fairly slowly and steadily. I think that is the key here. This will increase your fluency at reading. I know some of you have missed reading and you're going back to it now that you have your eSight. And you often say to me, well, it's so slow with eSight, but can you see that when you're slow and steady, and don't have to go back over what you were trying to read, it's actually gonna make it faster for you. And then gradually you'll just get faster and faster and faster at scanning until, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an enjoyable experience for you. So here's the, here's the Roy Boss front of the box, just so that you have an overview of what we're looking at. And um, that print on the back there was very small, it's something I could never read without eSight. So enjoy your brew, as they say in England. <laughs> I'm a tea buff. Being from England, I have to be a tea buff, don't I? So you can see on the front, it's organic, you can see what it is. And there we are. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty much it. You can do, you can apply that same principle with any items in your kitchen that you want to read. And voila. Excellent. Thank you very much. Next, we're going to be looking at cell phones and iPad with Cosmo. Um, and uh, Richard, I'm going to stop uh, screen sharing and uh, I'll get you to do uh, screen share.
Okay. One moment here. There you go, Richard. Gotcha. So All right. So uh, before I start talking about cell phones, I wanted to, this is a good opportunity to talk about TV theater mode. So I'm looking at my TV right here, and I don't know if all of you can see it, but I see vertical lines slowly coming down. And um, what's that message say? Um, oh, recharge my battery. All right. Hold on. We're Let live. Go swap. <laughs> yeah, live. Let me go swap my batteries. Uh, we, we, most of the time, but when you look at screen, it's not all the time. And we lost him. Okay. So that is a good. Um, that's a good example of the difference between an external and an internal battery that's going low. Yes. I'd also so you can see he was explaining that um, when you're in TV theater mode, those lines, those vertical lines across the screen, and I think it happens with computers as well. When you see a vertical line, it disappears with the uh, with the TV theater, I believe. I think we're back. Yep. Yes, by adjusting that brightness, that image brightness. Yeah. My unit shut off when I swapped batteries. Okay, we've all been there. So, so Cosmo, can you yep. just explain to us what what um what TV theater mode does for you? Yeah. Um. So on indoor mode, I was seeing those vertical lines. Indoor mode is what you want to be on ninety percent of the time for stuff. But um, TV theater mode, it, it's just something with the algorithm. It adjusts how the e site handles the. Uh, exposure and uh, when I switch over to TV theater mode, those lines disappear. I get a much better image quality, and it's not all the time. I don't need to do it every single time I look at a screen. Uh, if I look at my computer screen, for example, I don't get those vertical lines. It just varies from screen to screen. Fantastic! Fantastic. Any other tips about watching TV or using a? a um, let's see if my unit's booting back up. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we did say this was a live broadcast. <laughs> yes, definitely. And this maybe, is what happens during live broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe we should do it. I will go to mine and see what the card move that end. Sound good? Yeah, All sounds right. good. All right. So we are going to I'm gonna go back to the screen share again. And so we're going to look at some artwork that uh, and stuff that I have. So for the final bit here. So where's my video? Okay, so there we go. So we're going to. I have a painting here from an old uh, Eastside uh, coworker, and what I like with this painting um, is that I can actually see the uh, the stuff that the do you think. I'm also going to be looking at um, a. Uh, uh, Blu-ray disc case uh, playing um, trading card and a CD. So um, what I'm using here to look at the artwork is I'm using the zoom and the contrast that we've been using before. And what I find with this is that the contrast really shows me the details and the texture of what I'm looking at. So I can actually see the lines of the canvas or see the shade of the paint that they're being used. Um, what I thought was interesting was um, uh, doing some like, kind of abstract trees in the upper left and upper right corner. And using the contrast, I can make the browns on that black really stand out. Um, and kind of you see me adjusting the contrast. There's, there's a lot of contrast there that I decreased it a bit. Um, so you can, you know, I find it really makes things stand out much more. And this is kind of a surrealist abstract painting that I have, uh, from a friend of mine that I just uh, kept hanging in my basement. But I've actually brought my East Side to art galleries and, you know, you know, looking at stuff like, uh, um, you know, Van Gogh and uh, uh, Caravaggio and seeing the actual brush choice and technique is quite neat that I normally couldn't see. Um, for example, if you're looking at the ribs of the skeleton and the backside of that and how it's darker and how it's lighter, the ribbon going through it, I think it's quite um, interesting how East Side can, can really um, get me to appreciate it. It's not just like a flat 2D thing. But I actually see the texture and stuff and the technique used used with it, which I think is which I think is very helpful. 
and um, showing that there, kind of bottom, and, you know, seeing that, zooming in, adjusting that contrast. Fortunately, when you're recording a video, you can't see that contrast being adjusted. And uh, I like movies and stuff. It's probably a number of you have heard me refer to over the years. And I brought down a uh, Blu-ray of uh, King Kong versus Godzilla from 1963. And uh, one thing I like with the East Side is that I can zoom in and I can look at the artwork much better, much, much clearer. And I find the contrast works great with this. So, for example, Godzilla here with my normal vision, kind of a greeny tint, but I couldn't see the scale. I couldn't see the claws. Um, same with the King Kong uh, model that is here, seeing any of the fur, the texture with that would be quite hard. Um, not being able to see the people running away from the destruction behind them uh, would be very challenging. But this is where the East Side is great because I can zoom in, appreciate this, and add that add that contrast that's needed. And then if I want to read the back of it, I can just zoom in onto the back, similar to what Jeanette was doing when she was reading the tea box. Uh, being able to zoom in, read that text, and uh, add that contrast. Um, what I like here with the King Kong is the teeth. Um, the, the costume isn't the greatest costume in the world, but I find that, you know, looking at it, I can zoom in, see the teeth stand out more, use that contrast, and that's what I find enjoyable with um, looking at things like the And I can really pick up that detail that I may have missed usually. Also with this case, you can see a little bit of white, um, light shimmering on there um, because I am underneath the light that's above me and it is uh, reflecting off the box itself. Next is the trading card, which is a Spider-Man uh, um, Silver Age comic trading card with uh, Dr. Octopus. Same thing looking at the Blu-ray box, being able to zoom in on that, adjust that contract, make the Silver Age logo appear, see the details and line drawings that I normally wouldn't see on that piece of and uh, flipping the code over to the back, we're zooming onto the back. For a moment there, it's a little blurry because I don't have it lined up right. We just kind of look away, and then you see the text come in. So I can actually read the text on the back of the cards. I always found that being a challenge when I was younger, reading the back of the text, seeing the, the detail of the back of the cards, and e are great for that. And what I thought was interesting with this was that they actually show the comic cover that the artwork's from. It's like a small panel that I can actually zoom in and, and take a look at. So I thought that's a... Great thing looking at with Insight. Um, here I grabbed a CD from my uh, collection, band Ice Earth. Um, and what I like with this album here is uh, Todd McFarlane's Spawn Out. A lot of line drawings with it, a lot of uh, detail on that drawing. And, you know, I get the gist of it with my normal vision, but using that Insight, using the zoom and adjusting that contrast really makes the thing stand up. Like so the fire in the background, the cape, the spike on the arms which I think is really um, interesting. And you'll see if you're as I zoom in, looking at parts of the costume, you'll see it kind of get dark and lighter, and that's me adjusting the contrast. Everyone's going to be kind of um, experimenting with the contrast to see what works for them. Some people find contrast that's very helpful for them. Other people find the contrast may not be that helpful, but I find for me it works really well. Um, the back of this album, the track listing, the text is uh, kind of fancy writing um, that blends into the background. So I thought this would be a good example to you since I can actually zoom in, adjust that contrast to make the white stand out on the fiery orange and red of the of the background, which I think is great. Um, and I find this works very well. So I use it quite a bit with a lot of my music going back to albums and stuff. I want to look for different tracks or just check the names of the song and so forth. I can actually read the uh, track listing quite well. Um, and one thing I like to do is just zooming in here, you can see the publishing date, when the album came out. I like to collect originals of stuff. Um, don't like to get the reissues if I can avoid it. So seeing that bottom uh, you know, date when it came out is always interesting for me. And being able to do that with the e site works out quite well. Is that me uh, sharing how to use e site with artwork? Okay. Richard, how are we doing with uh, with Cosmo? We are connecting now. Now my my unit is uh, in internal batteries not high enough. Okay, well, uh, so that that's a good uh, lesson on charging. So uh, you can plug in directly into the eSight with a USB C cable, but we've been told that is not a particularly reliable way. The most reliable way to charge your headset internal batteries with a full external battery left in for three or four hours. Uh, I had mine plugged in because it's always worked. Uh, and today it decided not to work. So 
uh, I should have done what we advised. Uh, so my internal battery is too low. Even if you put a full external battery in, it won't turn on. So I'll need to charge my internal battery for a couple of hours and then it'll be fine. But in the meantime, so for for Jenna, what was it? So you're going to show the cell phone and an iPad with, with the um, with the yeah. Inside. If you can highlight me, I, I've got my iPad up and I can show you through Zoom what I was going to talk about. Okay. Um, there we go. All right. So I've got my iPad up, and the modern tablets and cell phones have really good accessibility options. The primary accessibility thing I use is on the, my iPad is the three finger double tap. I use this constantly when I'm not wearing my eSight, and that makes this usable. Um, um, there we go. Um, so, on, right? Yep. Yeah. So uh, you can have stuff. Here's my Kindle app, for example. It's got, that's plenty big for me to read my naked eyes. But the drawback to that is I'm going to be constantly swiping because it's not many words on the screen at a time. So I'm just constantly going like this. And if I'm reading a chapter book, that's a lot of swiping. And I don't like that. So in this instance, I do prefer wearing my eSight while I read. And now my finger doesn't have to do as much work. I'm just using the eSight to zoom in and see the text better. Um, and same thing if you do the reverse pinch. I can make things bigger by doing that. But again, now I'm having to do this constantly and you might accidentally click on a link that you don't want to when you're just trying to move around so when i'm doing reading on my tablet i do prefer to have my e-sight on and the accessibility options off for my ipad um another thing um the screen size or the uh here it is the text size when you turn it up some apps, Apple apps, are well built for it, but some apps aren't and don't handle it. If I go to Amazon, it does not enlarge any text at all. I was searching for coffee. Uh, so, and that's uh, for this app, doesn't matter what accessible, I have to use the three finger double tap. So, when I'm shopping on Amazon, I do like to have my e site on. Um, in the messages app, I don't have messages on my phone, on my iPad, but um, when I have it to maximum text size, if it's a longer message, it starts to take up the whole box and exceed what's on the screen. And so I can't see the top of my message or if Tyler's texting me and I'm responding to him and I write more than a sentence because the text is so big, it fills up the whole screen and I can't remember or see what Tyler said up above. So uh, I often like to, when I'm having a more in-depth text conversation, have my e-site on and my accessibility down. Now, if you ever see a not great image quality while looking at a phone or a tablet, you wanna go and check out the brightness. And so I've got right now the default brightness, it's about 75%. I like to lower it to about one third, about 33%. And that will often give me a much better image quality through my eSight. And you can't tell that's dimmed. It, it, it looks fine. And I find that that makes through the eSight camera, the letters look a little bit better. The, if it's too bright, the white backgrounds of websites and stuff is too harsh for the eSight camera, it makes it a little bit blurry. So I like to have that down. And I find that a little bit easier than having to make any adjustments on the headset. Um, let's see. So yeah, and I recommend that for any screen, whether it's a computer or a TV, if you're looking at something and it seems a little too bright, lower the brightness on the screen just a, a little bit and that can help quite a bit. Excellent. Okay, thank you, Carl. How do you find dark mode? Cosmo, do you use dark mode at all when you're reading? I do, and that's why my I have my Kindle in permanent dark mode, and so that's why it's got a black background. And I do like dark mode um, 
I like the dark backgrounds. I find it easier on my eyes. So on the iPad, you can configure this. This is called Control Center. You can add whatever options there are here. And so I believe this is the dark mode button. I have it set to sunrise to sunset. Now it's on dark mode. So if I go to my email, oh, that's my email. <laughs> if I go to my email, now email's dark. So uh, yeah, that's an easy option to set up. Um, and I, I like having this little text adjuster here. So it's real easy to on the fly adjust the text. And, uh, but yeah, it, there's a lot of benefits to having the accessibility options turned off and using your heads, uh, your e-site. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Carl. Perfect. Okay. So let's go share here. So we covered everything. So did anyone have any questions? If you have any questions, you can raise your hand, um, option Y or uh, alt Y. And oh, I do see someone raise their hand here. Uh, Shane. Okay, Shane. So, should we get a prompt to ask you to unmute? Oh, there we go. Uh, let me do that. All right. I wanted to. Am I unmuted now? Yep, you are. We can hear okay, you. good. I wanted to just share something that I learned about battery usage because I'm very mobile and so I'm going through batteries a lot I had to replace them a few times and um there's two things you can do if you have the old site three battery i have two of those you can get about three hours use out of that without putting it on standby you can get about three hours maybe a little more but you're gonna have to have another uh, in you're gonna have to have another power source because you don't get the warnings like you do with the regular ones it's just gonna say no battery so you have to have another source but if you want to make your e-site four battery last twice as long um standby mode is wonderful i had a live event that i had to host last week so i put my e-site on at one o'clock in the afternoon i did my setup and once i knew what i needed i put it on standby until i needed it and so then it was on standby from about 1 30 to 2 30 from 2 30 to 4 it was in constant use when i shut the unit down at four o'clock i still had two bars left on that battery so standby works great when you don't need that when you don't because if i was running that thing open from one to four i'd have been through two batteries uh, probably pretty easily so i just wanted to share that if you're like me and you're mobile all the time and can't plug in here's how you can save a ton of battery space that's great thank you shane wonderful okay yeah, wonderful and if anybody wants to know how to put their unit on standby you just press the power button very quickly and then press it again very quickly to wake it back up again. Yep, thank you, Jeanette. Perfect. All right, and uh, Donnie had the comment, so it's going to ask Donnie to unmute there. You should get a prompt to unmute, Donnie. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. All right. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I heard you guys talking about setting your unit on uh, dark, uh, uh, indoor mode or outdoor mode, uh, TV theater mode. I have the eSight three. Uh, how, how do I do that? So for the eSight three, there isn't any modes. Um, the eSight three is, is one mo uh, is, is, is one mode, um, for that. Um, so the indoor mode, the outdoor mode, the TV theater, they're modes that are built into the eSight four, uh, but you can change through the contact menu. Oh, okay. Um, for the for the eSight three, it's just you're looking through the eSight and then you're adjusting the brightness and so forth as, as needed. Okay. All yeah. right. A good question. Anything else, Donnie? Uh, yeah, I have a comment. Um, sure. Richard, when he was talking about his action figures, uh, he said he liked to look at those when he was a kid. Uh, I never did realize that Richard was a baby goat. Sorry, guys. That was oh. a bad <laughs> joke. Nice, nice, nice. Gotcha, gotcha. That gotcha. was a good joke. That was a good joke. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, 
<laughs> that's good. And and the one thing too, Donnie, it's a question is that the Zoom, the contrast, that what we were doing for the basic, that applies to the East Side Three and the East Side Four. Um, you know, it doesn't change. Right. You know, zooming right. in, adding contrast. And the TV theater members that Cosmo was showing, that works um uh, on the east side three, if you have lines or, or something on the screen, you can adjust the brightness of your east side to counteract that stuff. Right. Um, okay. To go from that. Okay. okay. Chris, um, so, much actually. so next we have Ruth. So I'm going to click uh, Ruth here, and you should get a prompt to unmute. Oh, I was wondering, I we had a hard time logging in and I missed the beginning part that uh, Leah did on knitting. I was wondering if this will be posted somewhere where I can see that. Yeah, it will be posted on a YouTube page on the uh, Vision Central playlist. And uh, so we'll have the um, the videos there um, for the whole presentation. And um, Leah, okay. if you want, you can also send Ruth the uh, the videos of what you did, and you can chat with you on the phone if you're interested in doing that. Um, that might be helpful. Yes, thank you. Welcome. Anything else? Um, I'd like to ask Jeanette where she got her reading stand. Okay, thank you so much, Ruth, for that lovely question. I actually bought mine from Barnes & Noble, but I think they stopped making them, but you can buy them on Amazon. If you look for cooks or cookbook, cookbook holder or cookbook stand and um, it's a bamboo one and it comes in a box really nice I, I mean they're going to be a slightly different brand than the one that I bought but it's exactly the same thing and I think they're like almost half the price of what I paid I paid like 45 bucks for mine and I think you can get them on Amazon for like 25 26 dollars um, US and uh, like I said if you look for cookbook holder or cookbook stand you will probably see the one that I have. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. And I don't see any other questions, but if you do have questions or want to clarify anything, feel free to reach out to your Eastside coach. We're happy to chat with you. And uh, this will be posted on our Eastside YouTube page uh, for people to review. Oh, oh, I just see someone raise their hand here. Okay. Patrick, yeah. There we go. Say so, it. Patrick, we get prompt to unmute. Um, there you go, Patrick. Yes, um, I just wanted to make a comment about the reading. Mm -hmm. um, I have an eSight 3, and um, and I can't remember if I used the West button or the South button, but I was able to uh, take a picture of what I was reading, and then instead of having to worry about... Um, how the cameras align to the book, I can just, it'll take a picture and then I can use the controls to uh, uh, zoom in and out, focus and like that and, and just move my head and it'll be like it's moving across the page. And I find that very um, helpful whenever I'm reading. Excellent. Yeah, you all um, utilizing the freeze mode uh, definitely works. And that's, you're right on the east side. Uh, on the east side three, it is the uh, it's the west button, and on the east side four, it's holding down the center button and freezing the text does uh, help. And you can zoom in on that, and that does work well. Um, so that's very good. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Anything else? Yeah, uh, that's all I have, sir. That's a great tip. Thank, thank you, Patrick. That, that's very good. It's a challenge because when we use the freeze mode when we try to record the video to show that it doesn't properly reflect on the system. When we're recording, if we try to implement freeze, it stops the recording on the eSight 4. Um, I've tried that a few times. And I'm like, why can't I get a video of it? And it's because the center button is also covered to stop the record as we're doing it. But that, that's great. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for attending. We've had a great turnout and looking forward to see people turning out next uh, month in April. And uh, thank you everyone again. And like I said, this will be posted on the uh, eSight YouTube uh, channel. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.